Every week, so much happens in your own country that it's hard to keep track of the news at home, let alone what's going on around the world. So the Global Summary is our weekly rundown of the biggest news events from around the globe. In the next eight minutes, I'm going to walk you through some of the week's biggest stories, but we'll be moving fast. So if you want to find out more about any of the stories, there are article recommendations in the description. This week's biggest stories include elections in Israel, Germany and the Netherlands, China's moves in the South China Sea, and some wild news about Tesla. Before we start though, make sure you're subscribed and ring the bell to be notified every time we put out a global news video. Lots of you haven't made the jump just yet, which means that you could be missing our future releases. So lend us a hand and help us get closer to 100,000 subs. Thanks so much for your support. Before we get deep into the news, let's start by saying Happy Persian New Year to any viewers celebrating over the weekend. The event celebrated in Iran, Afghanistan, Turkey and other countries around the world marks the beginning of the Persian calendar, something that's especially important this year as we head into year 1400. Despite Covid restrictions, people continue to mark the occasion this weekend to celebrate the spring equinox which brings in the new year. Last week wasn't just a new beginning for those using the Persian calendar though, with major shakeups and new political beginnings emerging across Europe, with significant elections taking place in Germany and the Netherlands. We've covered both of these topics in videos on the TLDR EU channel, the channel and videos are linked down below, but let me give you a quick overview. Last week saw regional elections in the German regions of Baden and Württemberg and Rhineland Palatinate. This might sound like a pretty niche topic for us to be updating you on, but these elections mark the start of a big election year in the country, with federal elections scheduled towards the end of 2021. Germany's elections are also doubly important this year, because Angela Merkel is stepping down as the country's chancellor, meaning that a new party could finally take over from hers, or the CDU could continue to thrive under new leadership. It seems that their new leader, Armin Laschet, has got off to a rough start though, with the CDU losing ground in both elections, both of which were former CDU strongholds. Recent years have changed this though, with other parties gaining control, and this shift seems to be continuing, with the CDU ceding even further ground in this election. This isn't a good sign for the CDU or their new leader, and could be a bad omen for their prospects in this bumper election year. Last week also saw a Dutch election take place, with people across the Netherlands voting for their House of Representatives, and therefore a new government. Dutch politics can get a little difficult, with so many parties holding seats and a lack of majority, and that didn't change in 2021 either, and while the Prime Minister's party grew slightly from 33 to 35, no one still has a majority. That means that Prime Minister Rutter now has to try and form a coalition to reach power, something which looks especially difficult given the party mathematics. It wasn't just the VVD who had a good election though. The D66, a left-leaning, liberal, pro-European party, significantly outperformed expectations, picking up 23 seats to become the country's second largest party. Preliminary results have also shown the far-right Forum for Democracy, Article 1 and the Animals Party picking up seats. We've literally just released a full video running through the results of this election and the coalitions which are likely to be formed, so you can check that out on the TLDR EU channel if you're interested, it's linked down below. Let's move to Asia to talk about China's latest moves in the South China Sea. Now this is a topic we've discussed before, the link to the video is in the description if you want the full background, but it seems like things are escalating yet further. This follows more than 200 Chinese vessels entering the territorial waters of the Philippines. The country's defence minister has said that the vessels are violating the Philippines' maritime rights and ought to be removed immediately. These boats are supposedly only Chinese fishing boats, so at first glance this might seem like an overreaction. That would be until you realise that these boats don't actually seem to be doing any fishing, and are in fact manned by Chinese military officials. This appears to be yet another encroachment, with China supposedly entering the territory of the Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, Taiwan and Vietnam in recent years. Ultimately, China's been accused of taking provocative action to militarise the area and take control of the sea. 
Famously, they've been developing unoccupied islands and even building brand new ones to extend their territorial claim. But this latest move certainly seems to be increasing tensions yet further. Let's move west to Israel, where the country is preparing for their upcoming election, where opposition leaders take on longtime President Benjamin Netanyahu. This might be the country's fourth election in two years, because no party has been able to reach a majority or form a coalition. But Netanyahu is hoping that the country's successful vaccine rollout might be the party that he needs to win, with Covid dominating the campaign. In addition, Netanyahu has also embraced two ultra-orthodox parties, seemingly in an attempt to win favour with the right wing. But time will tell if these factors actually end up being enough, because Netanyahu's party is projected to win around 30 seats, making them the largest party, but nowhere near the 61 he needs for a majority. Something it's possible he won't even be able to get with the combined support of all of his allied parties. So we could easily see a fifth election in the coming months. If you'd like us to make a full video on this election and the results when they come out, then like this video and comment below to let us know. This weekend, US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin made an unannounced trip to Kabul, Afghanistan. This is huge news, especially as we're only weeks away from the date that Trump promised to withdraw all remaining troops from the country. This agreement made between Trump and the Taliban hasn't gone completely smoothly though, with them seemingly resistant to meeting all of the terms set out by the US. The Taliban have ended attacks on US bases and officials, and ceded some power, but they've continued to oppose and fire against the country's government, leading some to worry that if the US were to withdraw, the Taliban would rise and take advantage of the situation. Biden is therefore supposedly considering the best decision to make regarding the upcoming deadline, and while Austin may not have commented on the timeline, this is a clear move to clarify steps between the two countries, and something we ought to keep an eye on. It was announced in the last couple of days that the 2020 Olympic Games, which have already been delayed a year, will be taking place in Japan this summer, although likely without any international fans. The Olympics have never been delayed before, so it seems that organisers are keen to get going with the global sporting event, set to begin on July 23rd, despite Japanese authorities warning Olympic and Paralympic committees that it was unlikely that any foreign supporters would be allowed into the country. Regardless, it's a big event that we can all look forward to watching from home, and hopefully will bring the world together at least a little. Finally, let's turn to the electric car manufacturer and stock giant Tesla, and two interesting scandals that they've been caught up in over the last week. Firstly, the company was forced to deny that the cameras and sensors littered across their vehicles, primarily used for self-driving functionality, were being used to spy on China. This comes after the Chinese military banned the cars from their facilities. The company's CEO, Elon Musk, denied the claims in a meeting with Chinese businesses, saying that if they did engage with espionage for any country's government, the negative effects for the company would be extremely bad. There's a strong incentive for us to be confidential with any information. Then another story emerged that a Russian man apparently offered a Tesla employee one million dollars to put ransomware into the computer network of Tesla's Nevada battery plant. The criminal would likely have used the software to extort the car giant, something that prosecutors alleged in court where he pled guilty to the attempt. The man claims that there were no links to the Kremlin or the Russian state, and interestingly the FBI hasn't actually even made this allegation, suggesting that it may have just been one man's failed get-rich-quick scheme. So those are some of the biggest global news stories from the last week, and if 8 minutes wasn't long enough for you, then there's links to further reading in the description. If you think we missed anything, then comment below the stories you'd like to see us cover in future episodes. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.